Hello, Mark here from Rockin' Walls. And on this video, I just wanted to show you a couple of the tools that I'm using to set some large bluestones, some squares and wrecks that are like anywhere from three inches to four inches. They're just, they're just super, super large. And I'm doing a parking pad. Now, the first tool to talk about, which obviously you can see right here behind me, is the uh, Ditchwich SK850 Plus, which uh, the Plus is actually equal to the 1050, which is an incredible machine. Had a Toro uh, TX420, and that was great. Loved it. I work alone, and this machine really helps me out a lot by uh, moving material around and just kind of assisting me when... Uh, when I need an extra hand. So I really like it. I have a uh, large 52 inch bucket on it and then just a set of forks and that's the main two attachments. So let's uh, let's get into some of the tools for the patio and flip around. All right, so let's start off over here. Basically have two different types of uh, digging bars. Now, the one that I've had forever was a little bit thinner metal for the most part, but has this really flat point at the end. And that one's absolutely great for these larger sheet stock. And then I have the uh, a little bit thicker, stronger bar, which I picked up, which I really, really love. So they both have really nice purpose. And then I have the 6x6s and just some other wood, which I use as my uh, pry bars. And then I have a small, a little one, and then also, um, you know, one of the really tiny ones there also to help get in and lift stuff up. A two-pound hammer, the pull trowel, Marshall pull trowel. I love the yardstick. I'll talk about that. Obviously, a tape measure, different type of marking devices, um, the PaveTech little um, like paver marker, Sharpie, soapstone pencil, and then plate chalk, which I love plate chalk. You can't go wrong. I mean, who doesn't love plate chalk? The cutoff saw, Husqvarna K770. I'll brush to help brush off some of the stones sometimes because I'm uh, betting everything on the number eight so it sometimes gets in your way and you don't really want it falling into your joints until you're really done. The eight pound PaveTech hammer which I love. These uh, hammers are great. Now the whites, the dead blow, the black is great for um, for really hitting the different types of stones and I use that for all my you know blue stone. And I mentioned the yardstick, of course. Different types of levels. I use those for the straight edge aspects and then obviously to make sure I'm in check with my fall on the patio. And then some uh, PVC pipes for rollers. So that's pretty much it. So just to get started. Oh, and I forgot the rake. And I love this rake. This thing's freaking awesome. And I'll, I'll put in the descriptions some of the different products that I have here and links so you guys can check them out but just to start off a couple of tools really quick here and i'll switch over to a tripod so the pool trowel how i use that is basically if i'm trying to clean out some stone you know i can just really use this to kind of get around the edges and then also pull things away from the stone itself and uh, as you can see those guys are pretty thick so i'll get into a little bit more I'll switch to tripod and uh let's get started now, obviously, other things such as uh, safety gear, the uh, Atlas 300 gloves, freaking love these things. And all these, a lot of these products that I do have uh, on my shopping cart on my website at Rock and Walls, I'll be sure to put that in there also. Uh, but when I get started, I'll take the number eights and uh, more or less I'll, I'll use the rake to get everything kind of like raked out roughly where I need to be. I always use the stones as a reference to it and use my hand as a quick reference for measurements per stone and then when I get in here I want to kind of clean out along the edges now this number eights have a little bit of fines which is great it is washed but what's nice is when it's wet it actually kind of stays a little bit better but I just try to clean out along the edges and then I can just use this to basically kind of clean up now honestly that's great a lot of times you're just kind of on the go and when you're just doing you know things quickly you're kind of just using your hands, trying to get it roughed out pretty well. So I'll do that. The next thing I like to use, you know, the stones I'm using, I'm kind of create my own pattern. So the yardstick comes in really handy. What's nice is, you know, obviously my largest piece is three foot. So at a quick glance, I can just grab this, pick it up, kind of come along here. And I know that this run here is actually, you know, obviously over three feet. So that's really not going to help me out unless I cut a piece. Now, you know, quickly I can see what that is. So just for example, 
say I was going to put a, a 24 inch piece in here and you know I mark it 24 is right here reading from here but the cool thing is I can flip this over and then from here I can just very quickly you know come in and see what the measurements say this was to the end and you know knowing that that was you know I can read the measurements there and, oh it's 12 inches so it's very quick and fast you don't have to basically take your tape measure and keep checking and keep checking now of course if you had a pattern kit that you bought you know you already have all this figured out um, you know this might just be a reference so the plate chalk's great you know basically I just use it to um, mark off the stones where I need to go the other thing is this is a quick reminder if I'm working with someone else on the stones and you know with these are larger pieces so often you get like three stones with a like a wrong, long long joint so I'll just take the chalk and I just kind of do a chalk line just as a quick reminder like hey um, mark you know the next time you come to here you got to break that joint so uh, that's what's really nice also with the play chalk the sharpie I use primarily when I'm trying to mark my stones for cutting and then the same thing with the soapstone and then as I had mentioned to the brush a lot of times you're doing like a sprinkle trick where you're throwing a stone under and it's getting on top of the stone and you know really don't want your joints filled up so I just use the brush to kind of keep things cleaned up as I go so it's not falling into the joints because once the stones fall into the joints it gets them hard harder for you to try to get them tight against the next stone so that joint gets filled up with material and you can't really make adjustments if you need to so you got to keep your joints fairly clean as you're going I find and so this kind of just helps helps you a bit now the different types of levels, you know, obviously it just allow me at a quick reference uh, as I'm running out. Now you're trying to match with natural stone, you're trying to match corner to corner. So like this spot here is a little bit lower and this is, this is much higher. So, you know, to put this here is not really an accurate reading, but the reality is I already have um, an eighth fall looking at that. And the nice thing with these guys, and I'm not sure if you can really see it, but the Swanson level are really cool because they have pretty much a, an eighth and a quarter uh, bubble in there, which you may or not be able to see. But anyway, so I love that. So, so that's just a couple things there. The two pound hammer, once I kind of get, like say a stone set, I like to come back in and really get that um, gravel packed back in on my edges. Because sometimes using the digging bar, I'll have an open void. And this is great to kind of get everything really nice and tight in there. So the eight pounder, as I'm coming along, and I'm setting a stone. I really use that in order to help get everything uh, set, which is which is stellar. The small digging bar here, pry bar, uh, is good with smaller blocks. If you you know just need something short, you need you basically need to lift up lift up a stone and say we'll just say for example this guy here. I need to lift it up. And with these big guys, actually that is kind of cool. It happened. But uh, with these big guys, what I've been doing is, because they're like so heavy, I've been doing a lot of this in order to help get everything nice and compacted. And then the, I'd mentioned the sprinkle trick. So sprinkle trick is basically, I put a knee on one of the bars and I might just throw the gravel in there. And a lot of times you can see with this gravel, you can see where there's, there's spots or areas where the gravel really hasn't settled a whole lot. Now the only thing is, you know, by doing this bouncing trick, I gotta, a bit of a joint now, of a wider joint at the end, and this is not lined up anymore, so I want to make sure I get to keep that back. So that's a couple things. I'm going to show you, I'm going to go ahead and find another stone and get one set like right in here or in the pattern, and we'll show you that here shortly.
a couple things to point out. When I'm hitting this stone, I'm listening for how the, how the sound is. A lot of times, when you're hitting it, you can feel how solid it is, or if you have a spot that's pretty weak, like over this corner, getting a little bit more bounce than I want. Same thing out here. That's really good. That's not too bad. So I need to pull this out and get some more gravel. Plus, my edges right here are not lined up. It needs to come up. I can also do a quick check now, see if I have any spots that are kind of uh, not, the gravel is not really compacting as much as I would like. You really can see it with the stone gravel once you kind of get a big stone set on top. And when I'm working the hammer, if this is the area I want to get to come down, I try to work my way in with the hammer. I don't go right to that spot. I might come out here, try to work towards it. Looks good, edges are good. Quarter fall out. Small fall out towards me, which is good. So as you can see, that pretty much concludes everything that I wanted to cover tool-wise. Obviously, safety is important. The last thing is the rollers. If you have a stone and say you need to pick it up and move it, the rollers are nice because you can put it on the rollers and pretty much if this was save the stone, pull it out of your pattern, set it up on the section you've done. You can either slide it you know, this way or even with the weight, it will slide this way, which is really nice having the pipes. And then say, say this was a stone, you know, you need to make adjustments or you just want to set a stone, you can even use the rollers in the gravel, get it where it needs to go and then pull those out. So I don't use these as much. Really the digging bars and um, six by sixes, even four by four would be nice. That's it. Thank you. If you liked this uh, video and you found it helpful, uh, please give me a thumbs up consider subscribing to the channel and uh, feel free to put any comments below. All right, be safe, have fun, and uh, I think that's pretty much it. All right, we'll see you the next time. Bye-bye. Two other things I wanted to talk about which I did not cover. Snow plowing, which I like to call it. Sounds cool. And then also just uh, when you lift up the stone. So have the angle here. Hopefully you'll be able to see it. So when you're taking a blue stone or a large uh, stone that you're setting for patio, and say you're trying to push it in, a lot of times, like if you're using like the number eight, which is a three eighths wash stone, um, you get this pile of stone and then you can't, you can't get any further. So you gotta keep your joints, as I mentioned earlier, clean, but you almost have to like basically lift up the stone um, to get it over that. And then, then you kinda wanna you know, work it back down. The other thing is, uh, say you're trying to adjust your stone and this is just the sample. So I'm out there with my pry bar and I keep doing one of these. I keep lifting it, keep lifting it. It's obviously a lot bigger than this one. And what can happen is you can end up with like a void right here, you know, just from the stone getting lifted. So you have to be very mindful of that. It's tricky when you have big stones, unless you're using a suction cup system to lift them up and set them back down, but your bedding can get all messed up. And then say you go to set the stone and you have that void there, it actually might be weak and then one of the corners could actually you know once it 
gets pressure could actually change the uh, placement of the stone. So you just have to be really mindful because you're basically, the whole name of the game is to make sure that your bedding is nice and flat and that you don't have any voids underneath your stone. And once again, as I'd mentioned, trying to match all your corners. Anyway, that's it. I hope that's it. All right, take care.